For months, we've been preparing for the safe, equitable, and efficient distribution of a COVID-19 vaccine once it is authorized by the federal government. We launched the Massachusetts Vaccine Advisory Group comprised of medical professionals, public health experts, local officials, and community leaders, and the command center submitted a plan and our first order to the federal government about a week ago, right? Was it Friday? Yeah. <laughs> Seems like a week ago. Um, our plan hinges on the FDA's emergency use authorization for a vaccine, which seems imminent for Pfizer and Moderna. As soon as that's done, and as soon as the shipments start to come, we'll move quickly to distribute the first doses. Today, we'll also talk about the initial phases of our vaccine distribution plan to explain when the vaccine will be available and who will be prioritized for the first doses. Our plan for the first round of vaccine shipments maximizes life-saving care for our most vulnerable residents and protects healthcare workers, first responders, and workers doing COVID-facing work so our healthcare system can continue to treat patients. In the coming weeks and months, this plan will evolve based on federal approvals and the cadence of shipments from manufacturers. We'll continue to provide updates on a regular basis. People should get their information from trusted sources like Mass.gov or your health care provider. With respect to Phase 1, Massachusetts, in partnership with our vaccine advisory group and health care providers, has developed a COVID-19 vaccine distribution timeline that's been accepted by the federal government. It was pulled from frameworks that were developed by public health experts, the Center for Disease Control, and the National Academy of Sciences, Engineering, and Medicine. The vaccine will be distributed in phases, starting with our highest risk and highest need individuals. Phase one, in order of priority, is clinical and non-clinical healthcare workers doing direct and COVID-facing care. Long-term care facilities, rest homes, and assisted living facilities. Police, fire, and emergency medical services. Congregate care settings, including shelters and corrections. Home-based health care workers and health care workers doing non-COVID-facing care. Clinical and non-clinical health care workers doing direct care and COVID-facing care are at the highest risk for COVID-19 exposure due to what they do every day. Providing this group with the vaccine first will protect them from exposure and ensure that they can continue to provide health care to others safely. Then vaccines will be distributed to our most vulnerable residents, and this includes residents who live in long-term care, rest homes, assisted living facilities, and the staff who work in those settings. The elderly, as we all know, are prone to becoming gravely ill from COVID-19. And this is sadly true for congregate care settings where infection is more likely to spread. Next will be first responders, including police, fire, and emergency medical services. Then individuals in congregate care settings, including correction facilities and homeless shelters and the staff who work there. And then finally, in phase one, vaccines will be made available to home-based health care workers and health care workers doing non-COVID facing care. And you can learn more about phase one by visiting the state's website at mass.gov slash COVID vaccine. The federal government has informed us that we should receive 300,000 first doses by the end of December. On Friday, we placed an order for 60,000 first doses of this allocation, which is expected to arrive in Massachusetts on December 15th. The breakdown of the 300,000 doses in allocation will go to the following groups. 164,000 first doses to clinical and non-clinical health care workers doing direct and COVID-facing care, 64,000 first doses to first responders, and just about 102,000 first doses to congregate care residents and staff. The shipping should contain doses from both Moderna and Pfizer pending FDA authorization. Massachusetts won't distribute a vaccine until it receives FDA authorization for emergency use. This shipment will be directly distributed to 32 hospitals that provide geographic coverage across the state. Hospitals that receive vaccine shipments will have access to the ultra cold storage or dry ice required to store the vaccine. Massachusetts plans to work with other hospitals to expand vaccine distribution in the months ahead 
and it's critical that hospitals can properly store the vaccine before they accept shipments. If phase one goes according to plan, we plan to start phase two sometime in February. Phase two focuses on workers in critical industries and individuals with one or more comorbidities. It then extends to a broader universe of adults that are over the age of 65 who are at a higher risk for COVID-19. During phase two, distribution will continue to all phase one groups that I already mentioned. And specifically, in order to provide priority, phase two is individuals with two or more comorbidities who obviously are at significant high risk for COVID-19 complications, workers in early education, K through 12, transit, grocery, utility, food and agriculture, sanitation, public works and public health, adults that are over the age of 65, and individuals with one comorbidity. Additional shipments of vaccine doses are expected to arrive in Massachusetts throughout January, February, and March. We hope to begin to make the vaccine available to younger and healthier people later in the spring with an approximate goal of starting in April. As the vaccine infrastructure ramps up, the Commonwealth will make vaccines available in more healthcare settings, including pharmacies, local health departments, and in public health clinics. The vaccine will be provided free of charge to all individuals, and insurance companies will not charge any out-of-pocket costs or co-payments. And as I said earlier, the timeline and the est estimated quantities of vaccine available to Massachusetts will depend on several variables. This stage, when the vaccine becomes available to the public under the age of 65, is still months away. It's still too early, and there are too many variables that are still being worked out to say exactly when this stage of the process would get underway, but our estimate is that this segment of the population could start getting vaccinated sometime in the spring. That means two things. We'll have more information in the coming weeks and months on this stage, and we all need to continue to wear face coverings, avoid groups, and work to stop the spread. Members of the public, healthcare providers, and others can learn more about when and where they'll be able to receive the vaccine at mass.gov slash COVID vaccine. And we'll continue to update mass.gov with more information on this process as it moves forward. While we know everyone's eager to green light the vaccines, obviously safety is fundamental and paramount. The vaccine will not be distributed in Massachusetts until the FDA has approved it for emergency use and it is deemed to be safe. Vaccines go through more testing than any other pharmaceutical, including extensive testing and clinical trials. Again, vaccines will be safe and no one would distribute them if they weren't. Dr. Bittinger will have more to say on this. The Commonwealth is also committed to an equi equitable distribution of the vaccine, and we recognize that the pandemic has disproportionately affected communities of color and low-income people. Our Vaccine Advisory Board has been intently focused on ensuring that these voices have been heard during the planning process and included represent representatives from this community. Communities of color and at-risk populations are prioritized in distribution timelines. And our administration will be focusing intently on reaching these individuals and making clear that the vaccine is safe and effective. We've prioritized multilingual, community-oriented outreach throughout our response to this pandemic, and that will main, remain true for this process. In a moment, Reverend Liz Walker of the Roxbury Presbyterian Church and a member of our vaccine advisory group We'll talk a little more about that. Vaccine distribution will be a long process that plays out over several months, and these timelines could change based on production. Massachusetts will continue to work with the federal government to ensure a safe, equitable, and efficient distribution of these vaccines, but there are some elements of this process that will evolve over time, like how many other vaccines will be approved for emergency use and when, and how quickly doses associated with those vaccines will be available to the states. We're going to ask the public to be patient and to get their information from a trusted source. Today, we'll be posting an FAQ, Frequently Asked Questions, 
and short presentation to explain the timeline and phases for vaccine distribution. And these documents should answer more questions on safety distribution and who qualifies in each phase. If you have additional questions on which phase you qualify for, please contact your health care provider. I want to thank the public in advance for their patience and their vigilance throughout this process. The availability of a COVID-19 vaccine obviously provides much needed hope and relief for many. In some ways, it does represent the so-called light at the end of the tunnel. But administering a vaccine to one person is, several, is a several week process. And after the first dose, a person must wait about six weeks and then receive a second dose. Both the Moderna and Pfizer vaccines take about six weeks to provide a person with immunity from the virus. That means that while the first doses will be administered shortly, we're several months away from safely vaccinating a majority of the people of Massachusetts. We are certainly not out of the woods yet, and it's critical that people continue following the state guidance and the preventive measures that so many of you have abided by for the past 10 months. Let me just, <laughs> let me just close by saying, once again, it's really important to wear face coverings at all times in public when you're around other people, and especially when you're around folks who aren't members of your own household, and to do everything you can to avoid spending time with groups that you don't spend time with every day. And throughout this process, you can visit mass.gov COVID vaccine to learn more about the distribution timeline as more information becomes available to us and when you can expect to have access to the vaccine yourself.